Hey folks, welcome to MoGraph Plus. This video is a free sample from our course, The Ultimate Introduction to v 4 Cinema 4D. It's a massive 13 plus hours course in which we explore all the aspects of v 4 Cinema 4D thoroughly. Make sure to check it out, the link is in the description. Also be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Let's start with a plastic shader. So create a new V-Ray material and assign it to the shader ball and start interactive rendering. We are going for an orangish reddish plastic here. For plastic shaders, the fuse and subsurface scattering are probably the most important component and contributor to the final look of the shader alongside reflection, obviously. And normally you want to have the same diffuse and subsurface scattering color. So let's add a new V-Ray color node. Change its color to a vibrant orangish red with the RGB values of 201. 45 and 28 and now we can use this node as the diffuse color input now come over to the reflection tab and enable use roughness for the reflections as i mentioned in the reflection video for most materials and shaders you can safely keep the reflection color at white to keep the shader as physically accurate as possible in the past we used to control reflection color and roughness and then define very specific ir values for each shader just forget that in this new approach reflection color is almost always just a simple white and the ir value for most daily shaders like plastic wood concrete and so on can be around 1.5 the only thing we are interested in is the reflection roughness we add variations to the reflection roughness with a grayscale texture and that adds all the realism we need. We can play around with our, our value a bit so let's set it to 1.5. If you have any issues understanding these parameters you can refer back to the previous videos where we explained them in detail. Now let's go for the reflection roughness, add a V-Ray bitmap node and load this BW underscore metal texture. As this texture will be connected to the reflection roughness input, I'm going to change the color space to raw as we are in ACES and connect the texture to the reflection roughness input. And that is the result we get. It's not exactly what I want. It's too rough, too contrasty. I want to be able to make the bright values of the texture quite darker so we wouldn't get this very rough surface. Probably inverting the texture will result in a better look as well. So let's add a remap node after the texture and use the remap node as the reflection roughness input. In the remap node first, let's invert the values completely now to get a sharper image we want to make the texture much darker because remember our input is reflection roughness which goes from zero or black or sharp to one or white or rough let's grab the first point and change its y value to around 0.3 Now to avoid very sharp spots, we need to make the very dark values a bit brighter. So let's grab the right point and set its Y value to around 0.08. Cool, so that's our shader after adding the variation to the reflection roughness. In terms of importance of components for plastic shaders or anything similar, now we need to work on the subsurface scattering. So come down to the translucency section under the refraction tab and change the mode to subsurface scattering. Set the SSS amount to around 0.75. Depending on the particular plastic that you are trying to create, the subsurface scattering amount can be quite low or high. You need to look at your reference image and see if it has a lot of subsurface scattering or not, and then decide on the subsurface scattering amount. I'm gonna change the illumination mode to directional and use the same red color that we used for the diffuse color as the subsurface scattering color and the scat radius color. And let's set the SSS scale to around 7 centimeters because we are using a fairly dark color as the scatter radius and the scale is multiplied by the scatter radius. That's why I used a fairly high scale value like 7 centimeters. 
and this really adds quite a lot to the overall realism of the shader. The next thing to consider is to work on the bump mapping. For most surfaces, you need an overall unevenness that can be achieved with a simple noise and then more high frequency detail, which you can just reuse the reflection roughness map for. So connect the original reflection roughness texture to the bump map input of the material. And now we need to dial in the exact bump amount that is needed. The current bump amount is too much. Let's decrease it to 0.1. Still way too much for a surface like plastic. Let's try 0 0.01. Still too much for a smooth surface like plastic. Let's try 0 0.003. That's good. We don't want to exaggerate anything. Subtle and little is always better. So that's the high frequency detail. Now let's quickly add that general unevenness to the surface using a noise texture. So most of the materials and surfaces surrounding us in real life are not made perfectly. They are not going to be perfectly smooth. There is some sort of waviness to the surface. And if you take a look at any reflective surface around you, you can see that overall waviness, unevenness. We can use very bump material like we'll learn in the bump mapping video a few lessons back to add that second layer of bump mapping. So add a bump material. Connect the very material to the base material input of the bump material and connect the bump material to the BRDF input of the output node. Now add a noise texture and connect it to the texture map input of the bump material. If I increase the bump multiplier amount to 10 centimeters in the bump material node, you can see the type of unevenness that I was talking about, but we want it to be subtle here. So let's set the bump multiplier to around one centimeters. Now let's see what we get. Now this is a pretty good plastic shader and you can call it a day. One last thing that you can add to your shaders to make them more realistic is to make the perpendicular faces a bit sharper compared to the parallel faces to the viewing direction. We can do that simply using the code section of the shader. We talked about this very specific topic in the coating lesson if you remember. For now let's set the coating amount to around 0.5. Coat roughness to 0.1. And coat IR to around 1.1. So it will be limited to only the perpendicular faces. And this will add another level of realism to the overall shader. We can go ahead and add a bit of variation to the coat roughness as well, but this would be enough for now. The good thing about this whole shader is that it is being controlled with this one texture that is connected to both the reflection roughness and bump inputs. If you load another texture, another black and white texture, you would get an entirely different look. Let me show you the final high resolution render of this shader. Great. Let's quickly turn this into an orangish plastic shader. So I'm going to duplicate the original one and assign it. Now we just need to change the color in the very color node that is connected to the diffuse color, subsurface scattering color and scatter radius color to any color that we want. Let's go for an orange color with the RGB values of 242, 139, and 17. We can increase the subsurface scale to around 10 centimeters if we want to get a softer plastic. And that's our yellow plastic shader. Let me show you a higher resolution render for this shader.
Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check out our premium CGI and rendering courses for Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, Maya, Arnold, Corona, V-Ray, Redshift and much more. See you in the next one.